welcome to the Tom Ficklin Show. And Rick, I really appreciate your playing that music because we are going to talk during this hour and show some some film clips that I've uh, some video clips that I've had a chance to take of the Emotional Emancipation Network, the Community Healing Network. There's a uh, summit com taking place in Washington D.C. at the Congressional Black Caucus in a few weeks. And even if you tune into this show after the the uh, Global Emancipation Summit is held, the Community Healing Network and Anola Air, she's the founder. The uh, this Community Healing Network movement is really taking place throughout the United States, also in South Africa and Tanzania and Cuba and, and uh, Britain, et cetera, um, and, and Jamaica as well. So we're going to talk today and we're going to show some clips from the emotional emancipation healing circles that have taken place, the talk about the global summit that's taking place at the Con Congressional Black Caucus. And it's an exciting show because we hear so much about black lives and blue lives and all lives matter. And, whether you, we think that we're on a continued trajectory of, of genocide, there is still a need, I think, as people can see from the, 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 the political discourse, that we remain, we like to think that perhaps we're a United States of America, but it's clear that there are divisions, and whether these divisions can be healed is really the imperative question, is really the, the operative question. How can we move beyond kind of uh, not being civil to being ci at least civil to one another? And so, I'm young enough to to uh, be be blessed with kind of living history and seeing history, and I guess ho really hope for future generations that that we will be able to become more of a oh a, a collaborative society, a, a communal society, in spite of the stresses and strains of what your 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 your, your perception of your ethnicity or where your your station in life. I believe that there still are ways that we can come together as not, not necessarily a nation, not necessarily even as a family, but, but as a world. So from your family, your church, your school, your state, your town, I think there are still are ways that we can pursue kind of a, kind of a unified front and, and, a, and, a, and a respectful front to one another. So this show is going to talk about a particular strategy that's in place and, or, and really orchestrated, but designed and, and kind of uh, uh, inculcated with the vision of, of Enola Aird uh, the founder of the Community Healing Network, and we're going to show a clip now that will kind of spotlight an upcoming summit, the second annual summit at the Congressional Black Caucus in Washington, D.C., uh, the Global Emancipation Summit. Uh, Rick, let's go to that clip, and then we'll kind of, uh, we'll take it from there. So again, uh, for further information, definitely feel comfortable in, in emailing me at, I use American Online, Tom Ficklin at AOL.com. Uh, for more information about the upcoming uh, Valuing Black Lives, the Emotional Emancipation Global Summit that's taking place in, in Washington, D.C. at the Congressional Black Caucus, um, it's, it's important. This is, um, I, I've moved around town a lot. I've been in the New Haven area for, for a few decades, but I also have a chance to travel to various cities. And, People are concerned. We're, we're talking. We're sharing, but we're also, I think, in one way, wondering where is the what what direction is the, are we moving as a planet? What direction is we move? Are we moving as a individual people, a collective people, an interconnected people? Uh, sometimes these walls are 
or erected between ourselves and others. And, and so how do we tear down the walls of, uh, of, of misunderstanding? How do we tear down walls of, of even, even our own particular blind spots? So we're going to show a few, a few clips during this particular show of Enola aired uh, remarking and chatting about the, the need for the Community Healing Network, the, the need for uh, uh, the, the summit, the need for the ongoing movement for us to really, really heal and to um, become, I think, more, more authentic with ourselves and authentic with, with others. That's the key, one of the key challenges, I believe, whether you're white, black, red, green, yellow, how do you really in, in your darkest, in your deepest, in your most private moment, moments, understand your, yourself and what is your role in, in society? What is your role as you interact and, and share with people? Do you smile at people? Do you say good morning? Do you say good afternoon? Do you say good evening? Are you, do you desire to be pleasant and not kind of uh, antagonistic? So we see a lot in the media discourse of, of antagonisms and name calling, uh, but the emotional, the Global Emancipation Summit, the uh, Emotional Healing Network, the Community Healing Network, all these words are kind of related uh, in my mind about uh, being human and really not being traumatized. Uh, sometimes there's conscious trauma and unconscious trauma. And so uh, we're gonna hear from Enola now for one, one of the clips, it's a brief clip, and uh, then we'll come back to kind of uh, put things into additional, additional context. The psychologists will offer webinar trainings in, in uh, February mm -hmm. and periodically. Our vision really is to be able to have in-person trainings, and we very much love to be able to bring Dr. Tessa Lee Darrell Rowe, who I know you've spoken, um, and Dr. Cheryl Grills. These two individuals have done extraordinary work. They're the ones who developed our Emotional Emancipation Circles Guide. They're the ones who brought all their, their passion and their, their you know, lifetime of, of learning to this work. Um, and so we would love to be able to bring them here to do trainings. And the idea is to just establish these places everywhere we, we are, um, everywhere that black people are meeting to have emotional emancipation circles, but also to train people who are in, uh, in relationship with the black community. Anybody who's, who's working with black people ought to be sensitive to this issue. Um, ought to be attuned to this. Um, so to be able to provide that kind of training, um, that's our goal. And we'll, you know, we'll be in the process of doing that. But the webinar trainings are, are next month. Um, the, the last question, then we can open it up for a question from the, from the audience. Um, we talked about the trust that um, is needed to, for us to sit together and talk about the three things. From your perspective, um, even before we get into the room to have these conversations, how do we get folks to trust that this is an opportunity to help us? Um, I think we just have to, we have to go talk to people. We have to go sit and, and discuss. Um, when, when I first started doing this work, there was really not very much resonance. People would basically say, oh, that's the past. Why are you talking about the past? And I think there is a, there's more of a sense now that the past is ever present until you get rid of it, until you neutralize it, yeah. until you do something with it, until you resolve it, <coughs> right? So I think more and more people really feel that. And so I think it's a matter of sitting in the room and, and just saying, he, here's, here's our case. Here's our case. What, what's, what's wrong with us? You know, look around. Are, are we a community at our best? Is this the best we can do? Is this the best we can do? No. We're much better than this. We're much more capable than this. And our children are crying out. They need us. They need us to, 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 to show that we know that they're in pain. They are in pain, and we have to minister to them. Um, and in order to do that, we have to minister to ourselves. We have to heal ourselves. And we can't wait to start working with them. And we got to do this 
you know, what we call it, make the, make the road by walking it. We can't, we can't wait till the work is done. We have to start down the road. We can't perfect the Emotional Emancipation Circles Guide. We got to start working it and modifying it as we go down. But the key is sitting together and acknowledging that stuff has happened. You know, racism is truly traumatic. And it's not in the past, it's continuing. And we have to figure out a way to process what's happened to us community-wide, across the diaspora. I mean, it's fascinating to look at this, you know, look at Senegal and look at Paris and look at, and black people dealing with the same stuff. Dealing with the same stuff. You, you know, you go to Cuba, you go to these places, you know, right? Mm. Bill? <laughs> I, I actually, I was sitting here thinking, um, just based upon my recent. The clip that I had a chance to shoot, um, wearing my Ficklin media hat, and there was a, a community conversation at CONCAT, and again, so you heard Enola aired talk a little bit about emotional emancipation circles. We started this show with talking about the valuing the, the Global Emancipation Summit that's going to take place in uh, September at the Con Congressional Black Caucus. And f feel free to email me, uh, tomficklin at AOL.com, for more information about that, or go to communityhealingnet.org uh, for more information. Uh, when Enola had mentioned the emotional emancipation circles, folks in and these locations will sound familiar to you. Folks have, have reached out to the, the uh, emotional the community healing network to deliver their emotional emancipation circles in in Baltimore, um, uh, in, in Ferguson, uh, in, in England, in Cuba, in Jamaica. Uh, so there's incidents have happened in America, and the emotional emancipation circles, the community healing network. I would say army of really devoted, committed, passionate uh, people um, have responded to the call. So not only so it's not only responding to a crisis situation, but also from a proactive and a programmatic standpoint. Meaning the Global Emancipation Summit that will take place at the Congressional Black Caucus this uh, th th this September. It's um, it's fascinating to hear Anola speak, and we're going to play two more clips that I had also had a chance to videotape. It's fascinating to hear her speak and, and, and expound and elucidate on, on what they are accomplishing because folks are realizing that, again, that the healing process is ongoing. There are some psychological components, and I want to be quick to, quick to mention that one of the, the partners, like one of the, the key partners of the uh, Community Healing Network is the Association of, of, of Black Psycho Psych Psychologists, the Association of Black Psychologists. They're key to kind of helping craft the curriculum, the, the workbooks you hold. You heard Enola re reference the, the webinars, et cetera. So there's um, there, you have black psychologists that have their, their academic credentials, but also have their, their, their cultural credentials, also have their, their, their DNA credentials to help us kind of uh, not only thrive, survive, but thrive as, as individuals. So for more information about the community healing circles and the emotional emancipation circles and the Valuing Black, Black Summit, uh, Valuing Black Lives, the Emotional Emancipation Summit that will take place at the Congressional Black Caucus, you go to communityhealingnet.org or you can also um, email me, Tom Ficklin at AOL.com. I mentioned this that you may, thanks to uh, CTV, you may hear this after the September event at the Con Congressional Black Caucus, but do not despair because there is an ongoing amount of activity that's underway nationwide, um, being presented by the uh, the, community, the community healing network, under the, and then the one of their particular programs, these emotional emancipation um, uh, circles. Let's go to another clip, clip uh, Rick, that I had a chance to shoot. I believe this is from CONCAT as well, because I just want you to hear directly also from from Enola. And this is not necessarily, this show is not designed to be a sales pitch, but it is designed to kind of to capture your attention, perhaps pique your interest, and trigger perhaps some uh, behavior in your part to explore more how you might be able to kind of interface and relate and align yourself to this uh, ongoing, I, I think, really beneficial um, humanitarian effort. To, to break the essence of the enslavement strategy, which is to separate us. So therefore, we must come together. We must force ourselves to come together, even though we don't trust each other, because that's a program not to, as well. 
we must come together. That's the most radical act we can do, is come together and sit together and talk together <coughs> long enough to get to trust each other again. That's the radical act. It's a discipline of coming together once a week, once a month, and just sitting there and struggling with one another. And being honest with one another. So what they've developed for us is something called emotional emancipation circles. Goal. Share stories, Bill. Share stories. <laughs> um, really begin to understand the history. History, Brenda Wade and Brenda Lane Richardson say, what happened in enslavement didn't just happen to a group of anonymous people. They are our ancestors. They raised our great grandparents who raised our great grandparents who raised our grandparents who raised, grandparents who raised us, raised our parents. Attitudes and behaviors were handed down, almost like heirlooms. Some of them really, really good, and that's the really important thing. There is so much good that we have as children of the diaspora. There is so much that is good. There is so much that my grandmother taught me that was good. I need to figure out the good and take that with me into the future and give, them, give that to my children. But I got to leave that other stuff that's so toxic behind so that we can be at our best. So this is the emotional emancipation process, circle process. The other key of it is learning emotional wellness skills. Mindfulness, Tom. The, the need to really recognize that we can control our emotions. Our emotions don't have to control us. The nicest, the most interesting thing I've ever learned about the brain is that if you do this, and if you think about this as the neocortex, the part that really is the smart part and does all the important reasoning stuff. This part is the animal, the lim limbic system, the animal part of the brain, and this is the emotional part of the brain. And when I heard that, this um, guy who works with uh, Deepak Chopra did this. I woke up one morning, he was on CPTV, and he was just doing this thing. I was like, wow, this is so exciting to know that I could actually talk to my, I could actually envision my brain and say, okay, which part of my brain now is driving me to want to eat that ice cream over there? And what other part of my brain can I use to try to? It doesn't always work, but I, I can, he was saying that you can control your brain. Your brain does not have to control you. And that's the emotional wellness part of the emotional emancipation. Again, I'm, I'm I must admit, in full disclosure, I am teasing you by just really showing you some snippets of a community conversation that I had a chance to videotape at, at CONCAT where um, Anola and Sh Shahid were kind of really discussing and sharing information. But the, the tease is intentional, and if you email me, I can send you uh, further, further clips and information about that. You just heard a, a, a Tom Ficklin at AOL.com. You heard Anola talk about the, uh, the, the centering and, and Deepak Chopra, et cetera. Uh, there is a toolkit that uh, the Community Healing Network has de developed and you it can be downloaded. So if you go to communityhealingnet.org, uh, you can download a, a toolkit that kind of gives some suggestions and references on how one can center themselves. We hear a lot about yoga and Tai Chi and meditation, etc. These um, uh, really quite ancient um, wisdom tools are still very uh, pr practical and, and applicable today. There's so much medical research on, on the, the benefit of, of meditation. The uh, Deepak Chopra and others have, have, are, are pretty much, are somewhat well known in this regard, uh, but the toolkit gives you a good variety of, 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 um, of options and, and research tools on how to center yourself, be more in control, be more really passionate. Yeah, I would say even be more alert. And when I say passionate, not from the erotic sense, but just sometimes I'm sure we've observed people that seem, and sometimes ourselves, that we, sometimes we might be, oh, depressed or um, not as enthusiastic about matters or not as enthusiastic about life in general or life in particular. But to be, but but to kind of reignite your, your passion for what is your purpose? What is your what is your passion? What is your what what product? What is your manifestation? Uh, so there's a toolkit kind of available to help to help you. Uh, 
uh, just kind of really restoke and rearm and, and, re, and regird your, your, your loins, if you will, for not necessarily only the battles, but also the, I would say, the, say the ecstasy of what does it mean to be a, a human being and alive at this point in time where we see so many challenges, so many uh, uh, attacks on, on what's authentic and what's, who's a racist and who's not and who's a bigot and who's not. So these are certainly, we're getting bombarded with words and how do, how do we defend ourselves, but also be holistic and healthy and, um, uh, and contributing to, and contributing to, to society, whatever, whatever, whatever that particularly means for you. Uh, Rick, let's go to that, the, the clip, the, the promo clip. I want to jump, we, we showed that a little bit in the beginning, but I realized that although this is just a 28 minute show, folks might not be, might not have a chance to always listen to, to everything. And I want to just show that, go to the promo clip once again, that talks about the, the Valuing Black Lives Summit taking place in a few weeks at the, uh, at the, con at the Congressional Black Caucus. And, and uh, appreciate if we, if we could put that up, Rick, that would be appreciated. Rick, Rick, thank you. you just kind of clued me in that we're that the clock is winding down. We're going to jump really quick to, to the to the next clip because I want it's a, it's it's short, but I want you to hear a little bit more from Anola, the founder um, of the uh, Community Healing Network. And again, she she is not doing this alone. Needless to say, there's a group of people, a group of really dedicated folks. But there's always ways to, and, and opportunities to enlarge. Uh, the people that are involved with this network, and it's not just from a, a titular or a, or a head. Really, their, their their motif is everyone is a leader. That it's the, the Ubuntu to kind of approach that we're a circle of leaders, we're a circle of cells. That there's no one person that has to be the be the figurehead to make things happen. So it's a sharing of leadership responsibility. It's a sharing of accountability. It's it's a, it's a collective sharing of accountability. Uh, Rick, let's go to this really brief clip, and then we'll be almost we'll have to might have to say goodbye. Being handed down across that's where the trauma starts and then it keeps multiplying and it keeps being handed down across generations. The question for us at this moment in our history is we are being pounded over the head by that truth. Every single day we are reminded by this culture that our lives are of no value, that black lives simply do not matter as much as white lives do. That's why our children are running the streets saying we can't breathe. That's why they're saying black lives matter, because they don't. They realize that they don't, and they want them to. It is up to us to make sure that they do. So the question for us as black people right now, and I do want to cut to the chase here, is are we going to stop performing to that script, stop performing to that narrative, and write our own narrative? To the question, how can African Americans in crisis truly heal from racial trauma, we need, in my view, a broad-based movement for healing and wellness in our community. No one should be excluded because no one has been on I would like to, to add a solution to that.
So again, as, as we wind down, the, if, if we're walking on the planet, there could be a need for uh, what the emotionally mantle patient circles, what the community healing network is involved with, um, what you might be involved with. And again, there could be other modalities and, and alternative treatments and, and strategies that you might be employing. But I wanted to devote this show specifically focused on the Community Healing Network. And again, if you go to communityhealingnetwork.org, uh, email me at tomficklin at aol.com for more information. Wanted to kind of help get the word out about the, the uh, Global Emancipation Summit that's taking place at the Congressional Black Caucus in September. And just again, want to give the traditional, but also sincere thanks to, or uh, a thank you and a shout out of appreciation to CTV for really providing public access television, which is so crucial. When we talk about uh, community uh, information, how do we become citi active citizens, harmonious citizens to one another? Things, uh, methods, uh, alternatives such as citizens television provide, it provides that vehicle, it demonstrates uh, that we all can kind of share points of view and even if you disagree, you know, disagree agreeably uh, in your public discourse and your personal discourse. Rick, thanks so much. Uh, see, see you next time and just it's always a pleasure to kind of do the Tom Ficklin show and it's a pleasure to kind of work with everyone here at CTV. See you soon.